Hey, it's Nick here from Grayscale Gorilla, and in today's video, you'll learn how to set up and use Drop Zone for Cinema 4D. Drop Zone is a powerful Cinema 4D plugin that helps you work faster with other Grayscale Gorilla tools. It also helps you pick great looking lighting during look dev or when you don't quite know what look you're going for. Let's get started. All right, here we are in Cinema 4D. Let me show you the power of using Drop Zone, speed up your animation and your lighting. So up here in your Grayscale Gorilla menu, you're gonna find Drop Zone. If you don't have this installed, make sure you go to your Grayscale Gorilla Plus account and get the latest version of the hub. Here is where you can find all of the plugins and also assets and everything else here in Cinema 4D uh, that is included in your Grayscale Gorilla Plus membership. So once you have all that installed, you'll find Drop Zone right here here under the Grayscale Gorilla menu. Go ahead and click it and it'll open up Drop Zone. Now, uh, I have this docked in my interface at all times because of how useful it is. And it's really easy to dock anything like this in your interface. Just go ahead and click on these little, uh, the little hamburger menu, whatever they call this, the three lines. And you'll see that uh, now you can place this anywhere in your interface. I like putting it right here in between my attributes and my objects menu. Now you don't need it that big. In fact, you can make it really, really small. Just squish it way down. I'm gonna bring this way up to uh, match it and shrink it down as much as possible. Okay, now that we have Drop Zone installed in our interface, let me show you what it could do. Let's start with Signal. You can drag any animatable parameter into Drop Zone and it will automatically set up a signal tag ready for you to animate using signal. So for example, this desk chair here, if I wanted to spin it around, I could do that really, really quickly. Let's first zero out the rotation here with these rotate scripts. And then let's go ahead and go to the rotate area inside of our desk chair and drag it into Drop Zone and Drop Zone does the rest. It adds a signal tag and it sets up automatically all the rotation right here in Signal. From here, it works exactly like Signal. I could say 360 degrees and set a linear animation. And when I hit play, I have an instant turntable animation right here inside of my scene. And because it's Signal, we can add other stuff like uh, noise and all this. So we could say add modifier, let's add a noise modifier and we can add a ton of variation here and get this thing uh, doing loops and all the stuff that Signal does just by dragging and dropping it into Drop Zone. Now, Drop Zone obviously works with position, rotation, and scale, but any animatable parameter will work inside of Drop Zone. For example, in this scene, we're gonna animate the brightness of this light turning on as the animation goes. So under this redshift light, you can see we have exposure. Same thing, any animatable parameter, you could just click and drag into Drop Zone and it'll automatically make that signal tag. Now you can see this one has a little E on it because it's driving exposure. And same thing from here, we could say, hey, when this starts, let's go all the way, way, way down. Let's go super negative so it's super dark. And all you have to do is say uh, set linear. This will set the two keyframes basically from zero all the way to its current point at 90 frames. And of course, we have tons of videos about signal, but if you wanna extend the animation, just come to your end point and say, I want this to be frame 300 instead of frame 90, and it'll automatically animate from the dark position all the way up as we get to frame 300. Okay, so that's using Drop Zone with Signal, but it also works with HDRI Link when setting up HDRIs, gobos, and even area light maps. So let me give you a few examples there. I use this all the time, and I'll be using Redshift, but this works in practically every renderer. Any renderer that takes an HDRI, this will work with. So I'm gonna grab a dome light here in Redshift, and right down here under texture is where I would usually uh, go to my hard drive and drag and drop an HDRI. But Drop Zone and HDRI Link make this way faster. All you have to do is drag your texture tab here or your word into Drop Zone, let go, and it will automatically make an HDRI Link tag and load up an HDRI directly into your scene. Now what's really great, if we set this to preview, we could see this even faster. I can go into my plus library and any HDRI I have loaded, all I have to do is click on it and it will automatically get loaded into my scene 
and I can see exactly what it looks like on my actual model. We have user HDRIs here as well in the library. You could load your own HDRIs and simply click on them and see an instant preview of exactly what it is in your scene. And of course, from here, you can go in and rotate it around and get different looks, but that quickly, you can go from no lighting to beautiful HDRI lighting just by dragging and dropping it into Drop Zone. Okay, now let's add a light gobo to this scene using Drop Zone. You can instantly transform any spotlight into a gobo light just by dragging and dropping wherever you put gobos into Drop Zone. Here I have a redshift spotlight and I'm just gonna drag this texture field right into Drop Zone and it'll recognize that it's a spotlight and instantly put a gobo on it. And just like the HDRI example, you can come in your library under gobos and click on any of these and they'll instantly be uh, added to that spotlight. It even works with animated gobos. You can see we have this caustics one working here. And if you wanna try something else like the tree one, you just click it and uh, you gotta darken it a little bit. And this one's animated as well. And finally, I wanted to show you how to use Drop Zone with area light maps. You can see we have this big soft box here up in the top of the studio. Let's add area light maps to make the reflections and lighting much more interesting. In your area light, you can see the texture field right here. And you guessed it, you just drag it into Drop Zone and it will automatically add an area light map. In this case, we have this nice octagon soft box, but there are a ton of other ones right here under HDRIs and area light maps. And just like before, you click the one that looks interesting and it'll, it'll automatically load in the HDRI link that you have selected. With some of these darker ones, don't forget to just turn up the brightness of your area light map. Ooh, got some glow too. If you have more than one HDRI link in your scene, make sure you select the tag that corresponds to the one that you want to change. For example, we also have an HDRI in this scene. If we wanna change the HDRI, just click on this HDRI tag on the uh, dome light, then go to your HDRIs and click away on any of the HDRIs and that will update here in your viewport. But if you wanna change the area light map, then click on the one that corresponds with your area light and go back to your area light maps and select one of those and this will update as well. Thanks again for watching everybody and don't forget if you're a Plus member, make sure you subscribe here on YouTube. We always have new stuff coming out here to help you get the most out of your Plus membership. And if you're not a member, you can join thousands of other artists using Grayscale Gorilla Plus to get the most out of their 3D software. And as always, we will see you in another video really soon. Bye everybody.